Dear viewers, we all like happy families, but what do we do with the people when they get old? Do we keep them, take care of them, or start ignoring them? But this elder care issue is such an important and burning issue that affects most families, particularly in families where younger people earn and are out of the homes most of the time. To speak about elder care, I have with me today Nightingale's Elder Care Managing Trustee, Dr. Radha. Warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I really enjoy being here. This thing about elder care is something that most people don't even think of till they have some elderly person at home. And only when that elderly person becomes some kind of an obstruction in their obstruction in their daily smooth uh, conduct of activities. Is it true? As you rightly put it, mm. the elder care is just gaining prominence. Mm. Earlier it was never an issue. Mm. Because you had joint families. You had joint family systems. The numbers was not growing. Mm. And this is the fastest growing segment, that is above 60. Okay. Which, if you see the uh, numbers in Bangalore itself, it's okay. about nearly 9% of the population is all, also elderly. Okay. By 2050, what we expect is the number of elderly and the younger are going to be the same. So okay. you can imagine the magnitude of the problem and the increase in the number of the elderly. Okay. But uh, you talk about a world full of silence and a world without colors. But don't you think that it's a little romanticized? Because uh, actually after 60, everybody is not that uh, uh, incapable of taking care of himself or herself. But mostly only when uh, people become, um, uh, what do you say? 70, 80. Uh, 70, 80, or when they reach a particular point when they really need help, that is when you could uh, think about elder care. Have you noticed that earlier the mm. longevity was not this much? Mm. It was only just about 45 to 50. Okay. So 60 was considered as an old age. Okay. Now when you see because of the uh, uh, good facilities, health facilities, mm. lifestyle change, the uh, people are much healthier at 60 and 70. Okay. So they could be even considered as young old. Okay. The old old. So do and you think you old. need to redefine this world? Uh, Elder care. I think the time has come when definitely between 60 and 65 mm. has to be considered as not old and, enough. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe the government has also to think of a retirement age when they have to think of not 58 okay. or 60. Mm. Maybe they have to come up with a thing saying patient people are still capable up to 65. Okay. So this could be a new concept. So when you looking. basically talk about uh, the elderly, are you talking about people who are not occupied otherwise professionally? I'm talking about all the segments. Okay. With retirement, as you say, stage comes with around 60 and the problems increase or add to it only after retirement because okay. the structure is gone. Okay, when we talk about elder care, we basically talk about somebody who needs care okay. and the person who is an elder Fine. in the society or in a family. So when the person doesn't need a care but still is an elder, do you think there is an onus on the family to take care of the person? Uh, I think a lot of stress, what uh, I notice from you is you're thinking of only the physical health of the person. Okay. But there are other things added to it. There okay. could be some sort of an emotional support. Okay. Could there be uh, not uh, some sort of a financial support? Okay. So there could be many other issues which are, what about the security part because of it? Because most people actually take care of their future plans these days. They plan for their mm, retired life. Have you known that only 83% uh, of uh, people are pension? Okay. I mean, uh, non-pension, only 17% are pension in India. Okay, so, so most people depend imagine, on the other people in the family. Uh, not exactly. How many people would have already planned for this sort of... Uh, now, what you see is maybe... But everybody knows that they reach a stage like that in their life, right? But why most people are so oblivious of this... Uh, Two uh, pressures. Fam, they would have already, as you said, the joint family system fragmentation they never expected. Okay. Second thing is, the uh, 
trying to please the family. They hand over all their uh, amount what they get as when their retirement. Okay. Thinking either the son is going to look after you. Okay. For his uh, the next coming years. Okay. The heavy relying on the family system. Okay. Which still I think in India is still we still relying a lot on the family support based. Okay. But you actually started off uh, this thing as a medical services. Um, venture, Correct. but later on it went into uh, a holistic or uh, a complete comprehensive yes. care. Uh, care. Yeah, um, I started as a person who was looking into the medical aspects of the elderly. Okay, because you yourself are uh, a doctor. A medical person, yes, okay. graduated from St. John's. And I was work working in different hospitals, various hospitals, wherein I noticed that uh, most of the elderly used to call the uh, hospitals for were, I mean, uh, treatment at the homes of, the, of themselves. The okay. reason is they could not visit the hospitals. Okay. They found it difficult. The traffic woes were difficult, okay. waiting in the hospitals, and also not enough people to escort them or look after them okay. in the hospitals. Okay. So I thought that there was some sort of a lack of... you're talking this. about people who are moneyed, right? Yeah. But what about uh, the multitude uh, where people really cannot afford anything and still they need a care than anybody else. I'm coming to that is, see, I have, we have developed different models for different sort of people. Okay. So I cannot apply the same thing. What emotional support a middle class family mm. would expect, mm. the same thing would not be in the underprivileged mm. or in the rural uh, settings. Mm. So our, my major uh, focus was on how to make different sustainable models for different sorts of uh, socio-economic groups. Okay. So this uh, has been accepted and this, if if it is replicated all over, mm. I'm sure most of the problems of For the elderly this, the most be important thing is that the society needs to have a different attitude and the government needs to have a policy. Okay. It's not sufficient that an organization like yours does so much work too. Fine. Because, you That's know, right. unless the, the society looks at the elderly in a different way, like it has a responsibility towards uh, uh, the people who are over a certain age, yes. who cannot be ignored just like that. That's I right. don't think that any kind of care is sufficient at all. Yeah, as you say, our uh, effort is just a drop in the ocean. Okay. But definitely what uh, as you said, it's the most marginalized uh, section of the uh, mm. community is, are the elders. Mm -hmm. As you rightly put in, we have a lot of commitment from, it should be from the community, okay. from the government, okay. from the people who are looking after the elders. Mm. I'm sure it should be an united or a joint effort to look into these issues mm. because it's going to be a big problem in about in a few Either years. it is condescension or pity or uh, 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 what do you say, an altruistic uh, attitude towards the elderly. It is never uh, a sign of responsibility. Or like it's a, a duty or to or take or care of dignity. somebody. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, oh, I'm helping somebody. I'm taking, that's not what the elderly that's need. Very true. Very true. They want a life of dignity. Yeah, because it's care. not, oh my God, do you yeah. need help? Can I offer my help to you? I'm going to be giving so much time of mine to you. Can I spare some time and come and take care of you? That's not what the elderly need or want. Definitely. Definitely. That uh, attitude and the intergenerational gap has okay. to be patched up. Because, you know, most youngsters these days think, you know, it's really so... So, magnanimous uh, yeah, them magnanimous. To be that is, it should be part of a society, should, something that should be integral to the very system of a, of a family. Uh, I understand and I, it's a really pitiable situation. Sometimes instead of taking care of the elderly in their own homes, they even go to old age homes to take care of the other elderly people there. <laughs> that's very true, that's very true. That's what, uh, what I believe now and we believe in the Nightingales is how to set up systems wherein the elderly can stay at home provide them with the support system okay. and not allow this migration as you said into old age homes why mm. should it should be the last resort okay. because we strongly in india we have a feeling that a person feels very comfortable the elderly especially feels very comfortable in his own familiar surroundings mm. so but it's not just you know we always look at this as a sociological problem okay. or you know an economic problem sometimes but don't you sometimes feel that it's actually a, a uh, what do you call a crime against uh, against our own people because you know I mean uh, most often when we treat our own people in a different way it's no different from treating uh, uh, a certain race in a different way a certain category category of people in a different way because you know the moment somebody becomes older like you you subject them to so much contempt hmm. and it's like you know I mean you are in a state of disuse uh, and and you could be condemned to a, to a state of uh, inaction. 
That's true. Um, the media itself, have you noticed that you only see young faces? You yeah. never have the concept of showing a happy... Uh, An elderly person is always shown always as somebody shown is tired, as and tired and needing and help or useless or, or yes. somebody who's not achieved enough. Achieved. And have you seen the support? Suppose I talk to you about an elder care. Yeah. You are not as excited when I say a child care or yeah. if I say uh, women's rights or yeah. an environment. Would you be excited? No. Because immediately the concept of the old age is projected in such a way. Something that's dispensable. Something that can be done away with. Over. Anyway, they're going to die. Yeah. So, you know, why do we even so uh, they don't bother about that them? They are going into this stage. Okay. And where is the support going to come from? Okay. Now, at least we have the middle people who have children or grandchildren, there are some middle people who are going to... What is the future of the genera future generation? How are they going to get this support? Who is going to look after Though it is so much part of our culture that we need to respect our elders, we never do that. Even at a bus stop, you can see that the elderly people are pushed to a corner and all the youngsters are, you know, I mean... Uh, that's true. Climbing into the but bus as you said, almost, you know, violently, you know, uh, keeping these elderly people away. And also, I, as you earlier put it up, elder abuse is on the rise. Okay. It could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be anything. Okay. And we try to address this very issue okay. in the Elders Helpline, which is mm -hmm. a project with the uh, police, which is city police and ourselves have got together. It's a toll-free number 1090, wherein we address this particular issue. And of the elderly people are not respected anywhere. That's that true. is one thing that is so evident, whether it's in government uh, offices or in hospitals or in buses or on roads, they are subjected to so much ridicule otherwise. Where are the roads? Where are the people to be even walking across? There's no place for the elderly to walk. They okay. are so not even safe to walk on the roads. Uh -huh. That's how it is. They the need conditions, to be finding no? space with the other youngsters who are you know, faster than them and uh, uh, more aggressive. Yeah. and uh, who have occupied everything that's left. That's left and uh, I think the condition of the roads also have made it uh, very difficult for the elderly to move across. Okay, but are there any laws to protect the dignity of the elderly? Um, the government had announced much earlier the uh -huh. national policy on the older people but till today it has not seen the light. light of the day. So the recently the Maintenance Act has been sort of uh, um, okay pushed in but still not implemented. Mm. So I really would like at this stage, mm. uh, you know, at least the, we have been, we had a sort of a workshop wherein we all got together and uh, debated about this particular thing and for the cause of the elderly and for the welfare of the elderly, definitely we have, we feel that it's high time mm. a national commission for the aged is, elderly set is, up. and the state commission, if not a national, a national oh, commission okay. coming immediately at least the state commission and I really would like the people, I mean the or parties which are coming through to put it into the manifesto that this is a very important issue, okay. at least the state policy and the national policy to be added on to the manifesto to help, as you say, for the elderly to live in dignity. Okay. But is it also some kind of a psychological problem that the youngsters have with the elderly that, you know, you're not done so much for us, you're not taking care of the country, you're not made this world better for us, so you deserve this kind of a life? Because, you know, you know very well, most often youngsters blame the elderly for everything that is wrong, either with the country or with themselves or the family or the economic situation. Fine. So, uh, so I mean, if at all you attitude, got this, you deserved it. Um, yeah, but kind of uh, just imagine thing. this same group of people who are looking at yeah. this way yeah. are, are going, going to move to, to the same situation. Now, are they geared up hmm. to face that situation, wherein they are going to be in this Certainly situation? Certainly the next generation will always have complaints against complaints. the so, yeah, older I generation. Mean, uh, unless you put things into, I think, uh, in a proper state. Oh, this cannot be uh, just an awareness uh, exercise or sensitizing uh, uh, regimen, but this should actually be built into even the education system that everybody needs to know that all of us are going to become old one day if you're going to live that long and all of us need that kind of treatment and unless we have a society that is aware of a thing like that, it's impossible for anybody to live in dignity that's at all. That's true, that's true. That's what uh, uh, we have been saying, even geriatrics mm. is a special branch of this thing which we really lack and it's not in the curriculum. Mm. We don't, just now they've just started some sort of a geriatric clinic here and there's sporadic. We don't have enough geriatricians or trained in geriatrics. I'm sure once all this is, I mean, given a lot of focus mm. on geriatrics and gerontology, mm. I think f things will fall into place.
Though people have spoken about different aspects of uh, trouble or uh, the, the deficiencies that the person goes through um, at, a, at, a, at an old age, uh, but uh, the most important thing do you think is uh, loneliness that is basically resulting out of a sense of disconnect. Okay. That it's not about just being there and even being in the thick of things, but you knowing that you don't belong there. Because you're made to always feel like you can be here, but you have nothing to say about it here because we don't have to listen to you, we don't need to listen to you. And even if you have something to say, we would rather listen to it as, 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 as a part of just the conversation here. Uh, the situation is sad because I told you uh, at the age of 60 when you retire, mm. the whole structure is not there. The mm. structure for the person is gone. Like it's almost like it's ended for ended, you and you just need ended. to live till, you're, till you die one day. So, uh, as I told you, what I believe in is a lot of these things can be elevated by mm. having these daycare centers, okay. which we already put up for different socio-economic groups. One is for the middle class, wherein they all meet, as you said, okay. they elevate your uh, symptoms of depression, could okay. be done here, because the peers get together, okay. interchange their ideas. And also it could be a part of a security program also, because they're spending the morning times mm. in these places. So more daycare centers for different uh, groups could be one of the answers to uh, to get mitigate the loneliness and depression what you're talking about. But have you ever tried to engage the youngsters in this process of uh, getting these elderly people to get back into the mainstream of at least life, if not anything else? Um, not not just as as volunteers. Like, yeah, not not just as you know somebody doing a bit of. Um, Mm, of his or hers, but but somebody who is really in the process of doing it as a duty or as a responsibility or even as a profession sometimes. Um, I think it's a new problem which has suddenly sprouted out. Like, because you know, even because geriatrics, you know, people had not heard so much about yes. 10 years ago in this country. See, now, I, I told you now, earlier I used to see patients between 65 and to 75. Now I see patients between 75 and 90 at homes. Now, you may imagine a person is living for that long and the whole family is not able to understand what, how are we going to support this and person? And what to do with that What person? to do with the person? Mm. I'm not geared to look after this sort of a person. And Where most people understand these people as burdens, if not anything else. You know, something that is not thrust expertise, upon them. Lack of expertise to look after them. Yeah. La lack of support systems for them. Now, Maybe. where are they going to put them? Isn't it? So A, a basic thing like, you know, people complaining about the way they speak to, I mean, I mean them not being able to take care of themselves, to, to how they respond to issues, to so many things, which may create a lot of problems on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the whole image of healthy aging or an active aging should be projected. Mm. Here what happens, as soon as I see an elderly, immediately the response is an old dwindling person who's just... Because there are people who can give so much back to the society. As you said, 60, 65 is not an age where they have to retire. Mm. There's such a resource people. And they have so much experience, experience from which they can contribute. contribute. And yeah. uh, it's so sad that, you know, the, the youngsters have an, uh, a wrong we image. They have a brand of uselessness and hopelessness yes. attached to them. So unless the, everyone focuses as an active aging mm. person or a person full of knowledge, mm. I'm sure things would change for the So better. what are you doing in uh, Nightingale's elder care? Um, this was set up in uh, 1998. 1990. We started off in 1996 as a healthcare services. Healthcare services, wherein we provided all the medical care at the okay. doorstep then of the elderly. Then you thought it had to be comprehensive. So when you interact with the people at home, okay. what I noticed is it is not just healthcare which I was looking into. It, there was also a lot of emotional care, as you early mentioned, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. the feeling of insecurity. The ego was not. I mean, the ego was not intact. So how do you address many issues? Okay. So that's how the program started increasing. The elderly person himself or herself or the family or you identify a person like that and offer your services? That's what I told you, they might close interaction with the elderly at homes. Okay. Put a thought into my thing is that are, are we addressing only part of the thing? Because many times I used to be called just for reassurance sometimes, okay. just holding their hands or to listening to their you know, emotional problem. Many times it was more psychological. Okay. So what was it that is affecting the health was majorly sometimes emotionally or psychological problems which are affecting these elders. So the thought process started like why not address the other issues 
So the Nightingale's Medical Trust was conceived and we have programs to address this very issues okay. of emotional, security, financial and many other issues which come with the elderly and not only urban, also okay. the rural area, how it okay. should be addressed. Mm. So we have to conceive some sort of a sustainable models so that as you say one person cannot do it but we can definitely create a model to say come on here this is the one which you have created. Mm. Now this can be adopted by, uh, by the government everywhere. Now I am very happy mm. the elder helpline which was started with the police uh, the government has picked it up and now it's in about 16 to 16 districts and they want to put it everywhere. Okay, but you're talking about just about 18 crores that's spent on elder care in this country. Yes, that is a very sad plight of the whole thing is if the budget is only earmarked this way, how much can we do for the elderly? Okay. It's high and time. how much money do you spend per year? In the sense like? Uh, through your projects. It, See, there are some places. You get places. a lot of donations. You get oh, some grants some and donations. funds. And you also uh, get your money out of the user fees. Ah, uh, yes. Some of them are user fee, as you say, for the middle class people can afford to pay okay. for something. But in other soci lower socioeconomic groups, most all the uh, things are but free. But how many people have you really been each able to reach day, out to? Each day, we serve about 400 elderly. This could be an enormous business opportunity for somebody. Um, definitely. One of them could be the home health services. Okay. But though I am tell you this, it's a very personalized care. A lot of... It's not uh, easy to It's not easy a... to be. Because implementation is difficult. Okay. And each but, problem is different from the other. Correct. And if it is done all over the uh, state, I'm sure many of the health problems would be uh, addressed to. Okay. But Again, again, I say this. Maybe because, you know, it's not just about, you know, taking care. Uh, some elderly people would have problems uh, with their kidneys, so they may need dialysis to regular checkups to... Uh, you need to almost set up a lab in their homes <laughs> um, or, you know, get somebody to draw blood quite often, give them the tablets at the right time, you know. So this is... And you can never make a mistake. That's true. Medical uh, thing, you cannot even take a... Risk. You can take a risk at all. Okay, and you should be there always on call. On call. Because it's a 24 hours job. Because, it is a 24 uh, hours it, job. If it's related to heart or anything else, like, you know, you could be called any time. And once you promise the services, you need to be available. But also, I'm quite happy is that the elderly are very happy to be in the home surroundings, okay. especially when it's a chronic problem. Okay. If they are bedridden, people mm. who are with dementia or mm. people with uh, stroke, many of them are quite comfortable, and you could treat them at okay. home rather than shift them to a hospital wherein the difficulties are there. How did you take up such a large responsibility? I'm sure a lot of people supported you. Started with one more person uh, after your uh, being a doctor for a very long time, almost 20 Correct. years. And then you had a lot of people to support you also, That's true. who came That's in as true. trustees, some businessmen, some prominent people in the society. But uh, it was certainly not an easy job on hand. I think if you uh, completely believe in mm. some sort of a cause or, you know, uh, when, I, when I started, I felt there was a need for this sort of a service. It, okay. was, it just came out of need. Mm. And I could also put it that way. It happened in my own house, wherein as a doctor, I had difficulty in taking my own person to the hospital. Mm. So if I had this difficulty, what about the persons outside? So this even prompted me to say that, let's do something wherein the, it reaches Okay. The elderly. Okay. So it, as you say, the people supported it because I think it's a necessity of mm. the d need of the day mm. to get them across, and I'm very happy because most of the patients supported it and uh, trustees. How, how, how are the families um, coming forward? At least when you started taking care of the elderly in their homes, have mm. they become more sensitive to the problem and have started lending more support now? To a large extent, at least there's some sort of an awareness towards this uh, or the sensitivity towards the elderly. At least they know that there okay. is some sort of a... Even recently when we had about these old age homes, we mm. had a sort of a workshop to say that we need a regulatory body for the old age homes. People mm. can't just sprout up old age homes anywhere. Okay. You just have a house and then you start as... We okay. say we, there is a need to monitor this whole thing. Okay, and Some what do they do? And you know, what kind of care is care being Care is being there? provided. What is should be the structure? Is it just a money-making uh, yeah. And enterprise. in the helpline, we used to get a lot of uh, complaints again, a uh, few of the old age homes, not all of them. Okay. I'm saying many of them are well-managed. But okay. this prompted you to say that we need a regulatory body for this. 
old age okay. homes. Now talking about dementia, Alzheimer's, um, which which problems are um, quite uh, quite prominently seen um, in elderly people okay. and which really result in them being completely ignored in families or kept away from not the understood view, most often because people don't know how to handle it. handle it first of all they do not know what is Alzheimer's yeah. they, they just uh, space it out as aging part of the aging mm. so this Alzheimer's has become a very great problem now because mm. I told you the longevity has increased so aging is a risk factor now. okay so now to create this sort of an awareness, we are having screening, we are having a daycare center for this. And now in the year end, I think we, we have already got a, a small piece of land by the, uh, allotted by the government, which I am mm. setting up a geriatric institute, which okay. will be functional by, uh, okay. by the end of the year, which will have a comprehensive plan to look after people with dementia. Okay. And uh, we are looking forward to you okay. know, helping more people okay. under this particular uh, at this institute, point, you need yeah. more uh, volunteers, volunteers to come up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what said, kind of people do you need? I'm sure there are a lot of people watching the show and who want to lend their hands and at least become more sensitive and aware, sensitive. and the and not just be good people good. by trying to help the old people, but really come out yeah, uh, with what they can crowd, do in terms of so that. Tomorrow they can look for this sort of a support. If they are going to set up this support, okay, it is going to help their okay. uh, families. They can be their, pioneers in it. Yes, can Perhaps be. And a pave the way for other people to join in. Yes, yes. And uh, whoever needs help, like the 1090, which I told you, any elderly mm. who is being harassed, can I use our elders helpline 1090? Oh. And our my number is always open for any of the elderly mm. who have some sort I'll of show a problem. It at the end of the show. Sure, it is a show, so <laughs> anybody can contact okay. us for any of this. So you're uh, happy with your work, I'm sure. Ah, uh, it gives me a lot of it's fulfillment, and I'm very happy okay. to be here today. Really remarkable, let me tell you. Uh, oh, this kind you. of work uh, is absolutely necessary, and I'm sure everybody needs to support you. Yeah, and especially you. since they're recognized by the government, by the community, I'm very happy mm. about this. Uh, whole thing and gives me a lot of mental Dr. satisfaction. Dr. Raghav, while uh, congratulating you on this great thing that you're doing, this great service, because we've come to the end of the show, I yeah, certainly cannot yeah, talk much. Yeah, I know. But thank you once again for having come here. And I'm, I, I really am privileged to be here today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.